Well, that was exciting. Unfortunately, the excitement didn't last for even half a lap. Spoiler ahead. In today's video, we will talk once again about crashing on the Nürburgring, dealing with it. Uh, but now, first, let me show you how this 500 plus horsepower BMW E30 performed before and actually in a way also after the incident. That could very well be the biggest snail I've seen. Hand for comparison. Well, maybe a big massive phone for comparison. No banana for scale. So what is it and how much power? Uh, it's an M50 engine with a 3 liter crank and a precision turbo. Okay. With some uh, different uh, camshafts. And uh, yeah, pretty, pretty basic for, uh, for BMW. Uh, Pretty, yeah, pretty basic, but we'll forget that all of this, this massive engine and the massive turbo are inside the E30. Yep. Wow, fantastic. Right. So what's it like power-wise? Uh, it's got uh, 500 horsepower on the brake and almost 600 Nm of torque. Nice, and obviously around like, what, 1100 kilos or yeah, so? Yeah, something like that. Yeah, wow. I love this, like, power. In yeah. case you don't have enough for, power, you have... Just for giggles. Yeah, yeah. fantastic. For the rest, we have uh, an S2R tires, right? Uh, yes. Now, okay, an S2R tires. We have Wilwood brakes, some bigger brakes. That's always good. Uh, someone is trying to move away, so uh, let's not get in the way, not get run over. And it's a beautiful BMW Atlantis blue color. Yeah, yeah fantastic. Interior stuck, right? Uh, Pretty much. Seats are from a uh, 240 uh, BMW. Yeah. Nice. 40M. Nice. So, uh, Shifter is just like a different shifter, or is yeah, it actually short? Yeah, mounted uh, shifter from okay. uh, China. <laughs> nice. Different uh, steering wheel, and for yeah. the rest, yeah, I guess we should really go. Yeah, we should go because it's like really a uh, busy day today. But give Big Single E30 a follow for also all the more questions. Yeah, yeah. Good start. Yeah. Okay, driver excuse number yeah. one. The clutch. clutch is the strongest I've experienced on any car I've driven this year yeah. so far. Not even like any other modified cars or GT3s. It's insane. Yeah. Now, aside from that, uh, no, no, we can go. Okay. Yeah. Aside from that, we have nothing. No traction control, no EC, no power steering, no. Uh, no um, rev gauge, so no, no rev counter, so just rev shift, uh, up shift when it uh, hits the rev limiter, kind of. Yeah, um, yeah 500 horsepower on very tiny rear wheels, uh, on cold wheels as well, so yeah. first couple of corners will be a bit uh, tricky, but uh, we're gonna warm them up quite soon, I hope. So let's see if we can uh, maybe leave the window kind of open. Just the switch. It's gonna make a lot of noise. Okay, I'm excited. Should have put the microphone probably maybe front by so we can hear the wastegate, but. Uh, you're gonna hear it anyways. Okay, well, off we go then.
uh, squirrely when you do that in fifth gear. Yeah. <laughs> so. That's all for the driving part because two corners after the Metzger's felt, before Metzger's felt actually, brakes gave up and uh, luckily I could kind of sort of save it because the impact into the tire wall was not that bad. Now, majority of you know that due to my media license agreement or actually everyone's media license agreement or actually the German GDPR agreement, you're not allowed to show crashes on a public road and never cleaning public session is public road. Therefore, no crashes are allowed to be shown. Now, some people might say like, oh, never cream prohibiting everything. We want to show that things can go wrong on a never cream. I'm telling you, things can go wrong everywhere. Fix your brakes. No, Misha, you're not telling us that you're just a shit driver. You're making cover up mistakes and using media license as an excuse. Well, let me kind of more or less break the media license agreement and show you here that when we were parking up in a safety pocket, there were no brakes. And here you can actually see them being pretty much on fire and smoking. So people fix your brakes. So now uh, all of that uh, conspiracy aside, we should actually also speak about where the rumor came from that I am moving to Croatia. Someone started saying that. I know lots of other, but that's for another video. Anyway, back on topic. As mentioned, uh, brakes failed. We hit the tire, wars, the tire wall slightly in Metzgesfeld. I knew that the impact was minimal. The steering was still straight. Everything was fine. So the first thing we did is go into the safety pocket, call the marshals to make sure that there was an impact, notify them. They inspected the tire wall. They said there is no impact. The car looks good. You can proceed and drive on on your own. So we rolled off uh, into Brightside, the second exit, came off the track there, went to Apex, put the car in the lift, inspected the damage, everything seemed fine. The driver, the owner could go back home and that was kind of it. Was it missing a headlight or? Yeah. Ah, okay, it's for the filter. For, uh... It even matches the color of the uh, car. Almost. <laughs> Master technician opinion. Yeah. What's, what is it? Think? Ah, okay. <laughs> Now, in this particular case, brakes failed, simple as that. Although I do always take more responsibility for my actions and want to fix it, in this case, I fixed it, decided to fix, and the owner did not expect me to fix anything. He just simply asked, and what now? And I said, you know what, I'm gonna fix the car for you. Because over the last 10 years, whenever someone was having a bad experience at the Nürburgring, and especially if I was partially or directly part of that, I wanted to make sure that that bad experience could be converted to good experience. We had two years ago an example of me crashing BMW M4 where I eventually turned the car uh, completely into a track car. Uh, many of you really loved it, loved the project, loved the idea, loved the gestures or simply that. And in this case, I was ready to do pretty much the same. So I asked the owner like, hey, would you like me to like, you, do you know this video? He's like, no, actually I actually have no idea. I don't follow you for that long, which was even cool. So like, because back then when we published the M4 video, a lot of people were saying like, oh, please crash my car. And I was kind of like, hmm, what if people would actually come here and let me drive their cars with the intention of me crashing them and actually fixing them in that way. So story for another time. The main important thing is that uh, although I proposed even to uh, convert the car to a full E30 DTM, carbon fiber white body kit, which with a conversion alone would be probably like 30,000 euros. Um, the owner said, no, I don't want that. I want a sleeper look. I, uh, I was planning on painting my car British Racing Green. I don't even want the car to be painted or at least I wouldn't ask it from you because I know it was not in the optimal condition as long as we can just like get the parts together, uh, then it's fine. I'm like, you know what, paint it. And the reason for it is I wouldn't say I feel responsible for it. I was the driver, so driver is always responsible, regardless of uh, anything. Um, but the reason why I'm doing it is because, because I can, 
because I'm fortunate enough that being able to do so. And again, as mentioned, I want to turn bad things into good things for people, especially when you have the possibility and opportunity, then why not? Nothing more. Some people are saying, yeah, you're doing just for the views. Well, the total damage of this was around, I think, between seven and 8,000 euros. So if this video gets, what, 4 million views, which I highly doubt it, for sure. I think, well, anyway, let's not get haters any more attention. Uh, let me show you, well, actually the car came back here a couple of days ago and we made the following video showing you the results. So have a look at that. And again, this is also one of the reasons why I said this year I am gonna be extra cautious with the cars that I'll be driving. And to all the people out there, make sure your brakes are up to spec. So there's that, enjoy the rest of the video and also check out the second channel. And a few months later, it is time to unveil the finished car. We transformed completely into Lamborghini Urus. No, just kidding. It is actually over here. Look at that. Repainted in British racing green as you intended and as you wanted. You happy with the result? Yeah, very happy. It looks, uh, looks great. And, it's uh, amazing. The guys have done a fantastic job. Absolutely mind-blowing. So. Before we go into the details, maybe let me go walk you through the cost of the crash. So we have, uh, it was actually not that bad. The most important thing is, well, of course, that we are all fine and we are yeah. here in one piece. But quite often when it comes to Nivikin crashes, you also talk about the barrier damage. In this case, this was just a tire wall. The marshals came in and they said, you know what, there is no damage, you can proceed. We could drive off the track by ourselves. You could actually drive back home by yourself. So. That was not that bad, considering everything. So there were a couple of body panels that needed replacing. In total, that was 800 euros uh, with all the strips, all the body panels, etc. Then the turbo damage, because turbo got actually dented into the, a bit, headlights. Like the headlight. Yeah, the, it had a bit of uh, damage, so it had to be revisioned. And that was another 430 euros. And then the paint, that was actually the best part for me, for someone who is living and working in Germany. So, the full preparation, full uh, like sanding and making it ready, and the full body restoration, so it is complete body repaint. Look at that, and fantastic British racing green. All of that was 4,000, no, 5,000. 5,700 and 50 euros. I will insert the exact number here. It is a lot of money. Well, let's say it's not, but comparison, if you remember my GR86 crash, which was only the side, didn't have to be the full body, only the side panels and a bit of front and a bit of rear, cost it 7,750. So 1,000 more than a full body respray in a beautiful British racing green. So, yeah, and this is why every time I would see the repairing costs in Germany and also other people who crash a car in Germany, crash a rental car and are being charged with the repairing costs, they're saying like, what the hell? Like not even in Eastern European country, but in UK or anywhere, I can repaint the whole car for significantly cheaper. We can do it also in the Netherlands. So don't ask us why, don't ask us how. These are simply the facts and I'm very happy that we could make it actually work. So, yeah, I guess you're happy with the results. Yeah, I'm very happy with the results. Uh, it's, uh, it's like a new car now. Yeah, so what's, what's next on the project? Um, yeah, I think uh, drive uh, around the Nürburgring a little bit. Nice. And, um, uh, maybe uh, at the end of the year, uh, strip the interior and uh, put in a roll cage because mm -hmm. it's a... Uh, Proper quite, track car now. Yeah, it's, it's really fast car. And very if cool. It, yeah, if it goes wrong, uh, yes. Did, yeah, <laughs> we were lucky back yeah, then. Yeah, we'd be but, lucky. It yeah, the the speed wasn't very high. Yeah, and and the barrier was and soft. The barrier was soft. Very good. Yeah. Very very good. Amazing. Well, I'm happy. You're happy. I'm also blown away by the result. It's really really cool. And I think since we're here and we want to see if our Vulcan Alpha equipment is working. Lapo, should we give it a quick scan? Yeah, sure. We should test it. We should sure. test it because yeah. we have an amazing Shining 3D uh, combo, no, combo, free scan, free scan combo, free scan combo yeah. HX. Yes. Yeah, I need to still getting into the names. 
uh, very high industrial grade scanner that we'll be using for our applications. And aside from scanning the cars to figure out uh, basically how we want to change them, it's also good for quality control. Now, of course, this car is from 1988, so it's been through the like through the test of time, but it will be fun to see like if the panel gaps are actually better than a modern Tesla, but that's actually quite a low bar, I think. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's get uh, some some scanning dots and see uh, how it looks like. Oh yeah, the turbo. You didn't expect that, did you? <laughs> right. Anyway, you know, I decided since that my week might get quite technical for the scanning video, check out the second channel where we go more in detail in the process because it will be the first car that we'll be scanning even before our actual project car, the Lamborghini. So, yeah. Ah, oh, he's already turning the barbecue on, so we should go ah, check. We should check out. <laughs> yeah, all right. You guys turn around the car. You guys check out the second channel and we're gonna get some olives from the Camperghini. Oh, yeah. Mmm. Oh, yeah. Look at this. Wow. Mm. Nice. Italian. Beautiful.